When Season 8 dropped in November 2022 for Sea of Thieves, me, many other content creators, and the wider Sea of Thieves community praise it for being the long-awaited PvP update. What was not to like? It was 1v1, skill-based with a robust progression system, and was designed to be accessible for all skill levels. However, fast forward to May 2023, and the Hourglass system is suffering from some issues that plagued Arena, and some new ones to boot. So, why does everyone now hate the Hourglass and Sea of Thieves? The matchmaking hate is a big thing that people bring up when discussing the Hourglass. We've all been there. You load into the underwater tunnels, only to take ages to find a match. Even worse, when you do, you can absolutely steamroll your opponents, or worse, get so outclassed you question if skill-based matchmaking even exists. Let's address the queue times. Since Sea of Thieves has had new content since Season 8, it's not the in thing to play at this time. Content eventually gets shuffled to the back of the queue if not updated frequently enough, with only new players engaging in it. In the form of the latter, new players can't really access Hourglass because of the high skill floor, in turn making the issues worse. Then the skill-based matchmaking sort of compounds the problem. The game will prioritise finding someone of your skill instead of a quick matchmaking time. This ends with longer queues. However, after a certain time, it will find anyone just to give you a match. This results in players getting really hard matches, frustrating most players. On top of this, the most dedicated players tend to be the ones playing Hourglass, so the skill pool is really just made of experienced players. Skill-based matchmaking does exist in the game, but because of the low player base, you end up fighting tough opponents or lost farmers, making it a frustrating experience for almost everyone. The matchmaking times were improved by adding the ability to fight players from the same faction, and cross stat matchmaking was added, improving the pool in which servers can connect to. So, how do we solve this problem? I don't believe the matchmaking can be fixed without making it non-skill based, and that would probably make the situation worse. I reckon these next factors have affected the player base more, and if they were fixed, then matchmaking would be improved by default. A bigger pool is absolutely going to allow the matchmaking system to have more options when matching crews. Also, another brief note on matchmaking, defending and waiting for invaders seems to be of lower priority on the matchmaking queue, so it can result in people taking hours to be invaded. I think something can be done to better improve this process, possibly making the pool much bigger. Sea of Thieves' biggest weakness for any long-term content is the earnable rewards. It's been the case for a few years now, and the Hourglass is no exception. The short-term and long-term rewards are a bit of a mess, leading to frustration for new players and apathy for experienced ones. Out of all the rewards I have yet to unlock, the only thing I really want is the level 1000 title for the Servants of the Flame. I'm not the biggest fan of the skeleton pieces, nor is there a ship to unlock for that side. I would love the Magpie's Wing ship set, but I really don't fancy playing for other reasons. So, speaking of short-term, the rewards from level 1 to 100 do not provide adequate incentive for those learning to PvP to stick with the grind. 1 to 100 includes 5 fig heads on each side, slightly changed to be upgraded as you progress. The Guardians have 10 titles too, from 10 to 100, and the Servants have 9 titles from 10 to 100. The difference is that the Servants have the Disciple of the Flame title, an exact copy awarded for reaching level 35 in the Reaper's Bones. It doesn't offer all that much in terms of meaningful or chase cosmetics compared to the other factions, especially when you consider these are the hardest factions to level up in the game. They don't just require time put in, you have to win consistently as loss farming is incredibly inefficient. All players want to get to level 100 to be awarded with access to the hideouts and their curses, but a lack of rewards make it feel like you're banging your head against the wall. Now you're stuck with the hourglass and you're level 100 you can now start to progress extra commendations and unlock new items. If you're a servant, you'll be working towards skeleton cosmetics. If you're a guardian, you've got reskin clothing, a reskin ship, and the magpie's wing. You have a large pool to get via commendations, but if you're a servant, nearly two thirds of those have no rewards. You've got to level 200, and what do you get between now and level 1000? Well, nothing. 799 of those levels will not earn you a single reward. So, what's really the point of continuing? Is a single reward really worth it? To even veteran players, they don't think so. I'm not saying level 1000 should be made easier, but the road to it needs to be paved with more rewards. If you have more of a linear reward process, players will feel as though there is a reason to be constantly playing, and therefore would cause more players to stick around. No one wants a rotating door of players in and out of content. 
There are loads of concepts you can use to make themed clothing too. Even recolors of new sets would be nice. Guardians could get a Dark Adventurer recolor, the Magpie's Fortune ship set, the Athena's Fortune ship set, Bell clothing, Pirate Lord clothing, and more. The Seven of the Flame could get Flame March jacket, trousers, peg leg, gloves, and hair. The Burning Blade is way overdue at this point, and the Seven of the Flame clothing would be really appreciated. Hell, think of all the skeleton clothing stuff that's already in the game, like the Reaper skeleton scene in the Ritual of the Flame. It doesn't even have to be just for these two sides. You could implement other factions into the Hourglass and allow players to pledge allegiance to more than just the Servants and the Guardians. The Dark Brethren is a prime example of another faction fighting to control the Sea of Thieves. Later on, the Grand Maritime Union could also be added as an option as the story progresses. The point is the mode has so much more potential when it comes to rewarding seasoned veterans and newer players alike. You were all waiting for this one and it's definitely on most people's radars. Cheating, hacking, modding, whatever you want to call it, has been on the rise since Season 8's inception. It was fine when it started off, but as cheating has become more widespread, so has the impact on the mode. You can be sure to find several cheaters anytime you dive and is seriously ruining the health of the game. Worse still is that this will always bleed into the main game. Rare has acknowledged these issues, but has done little to successfully eliminate the problem. Many players have been calling for anti-cheat at a kernel level, but for good reason, Rare has remained silent on this matter. I see you guys bring it up whenever I make a video about anything, that your biggest hope for the game is anti-cheat, and I too agree with these comments. Why would you wait to matchmake in the hourglass, when after however long you spend waiting, you're matched with someone who's using third party software, blatantly cheating, and ruins your entire experience. This is the biggest reason why I refuse to queue in the hourglass as every other ship is likely to have a cheater on board. There's even instances of absolute shitters toggling on cheats when they get rolled by a good crew. In essence, this game has a big problem where once content is added, it just gets forgotten about in favour of the shiny new thing. If content has a short shelf life because development focuses on something new, it just creates a conveyor belt of content that has the old stuff shoved off at the end. I would love to see us back to four seasons a year, with one that focuses on bug fixes, one that targets revamping old content, and two that focus on brand new content. I think that would be the ideal pattern for the health of this game. Anyway, that wraps up another video. Let me know if you're still playing Hourglass, and if not, what would bring you back? Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.